this final portion of the video on edible wild plants of North America, we're going to be talking about some of the fruits and the nuts and the berries that you find across the country. I want to bear in mind that while we've been shooting this film over many months, sometimes it was over 100 degrees and one time it was 13 degrees. It just goes to show that when you learn to positively identify wild plants for food, that you can always find something to eat, whether it's very hot or very cold, whether it's wet or whether it's dry. There's always something out there to eat. You just want to make sure that you positively identify the plants you use for food. Blackberries and their kin, raspberries, salmonberries, thimbleberries, and wineberries are found pretty much all over the world. There are many different varieties, which are commonly called blackberries, brambles, or dewberries. Some books will tell you, in fact, that there are as many as 250 species in the United States alone. So we'll just refer to them all as blackberries. Blackberries are pretty well known because of the Uncle Remus story where the rabbit tricked the bear into throwing him into the briar patch. Blackberries can be eaten fresh and provide a lot of sugar. However, some are pretty tart until they're ripe. They're high in vitamin C and can be eaten raw or cooked, boiled with honey or some other sweetener if you have it, to make a sauce to improve the flavor of gamey meat. In the spring, you can eat the tender young leaves raw. If they're bitter, you can boil them. Blackberry roots can be boiled to make a tea, which is an excellent anti-diarrheal medicine. Blackberries are found in open and disturbed areas along the edges of fields and forests. They generally grow in dry environments. However, some raspberries and wineberries will grow in moister environments. There are so many different varieties that you can find them just about anywhere. The color of the fruit ranges from blue or black to red depending on which variety you find. Some of the raspberries may even have yellow fruit. Blackberry plants may be trailing vines on the ground or they may be large plants up to six feet tall. Everybody's familiar with strawberries and there are several different varieties. They're probably one of the best and sweetest wild fruits available. When they are ripe, they're extremely sweet and can be added to less tasty game foods to improve their flavor. An important thing about strawberries is that the leaves are extremely high in vitamin C. Yule Gibbons did some tests on strawberry leaves. He took his results to John Hopkins University and they found that this is one of the highest sources of vitamin C you can locate in the wild. You can make a sweet tea out of strawberry leaves almost all year round. Blueberries and huckleberries can be found in open sun, semi-shaded, or filtered sun areas. But they are nearly always found in acid soil, such as around pine trees and in moist areas. There are many varieties of blueberries, and they can be found all across the country. There are high bush blueberries and their relatives the huckleberries, and there are low bush blueberries. The distinction between a blueberry and a huckleberry is one has white seeds and the other seeds are black in color, but they are pretty much the same. Blueberries are a very acidic fruit, and eating too many can cause constipation. They can be eaten raw, cooked, or dried. You can find blueberries on any size bush. There are some low bush blueberries that grow in the northeastern and northwestern United States that are no larger than a foot tall, but produce a very large amount of berries. Blueberry leaves can be brewed into a tea. Passion fruit or passion flower is not an aphrodisiac, as the name implies, but just the opposite. The dried leaves are used in commercial preparations and in herbal teas as a sedative or a sleep inducer because they calm the nerves. The fruit is green when immature and has a cucumber taste. Some people cook them like squash, either fried, boiled, or roasted. When they're ripe, you can break open the paper yellow husk and suck out the flesh off the seeds. They have a very pleasant lemon scent and a sweet flavor that is indescribable. Most people think it's called passion fruit because they're so sweet that everyone loves them or because of the non-existent aphrodisiac quality. However, passiflora translates out as passion flower and incarnata refers to the crucifixion or passion story. You can see the various parts of the crucifixion story in the flower. In South America and in other parts of the world, relatives of our passion fruit have egg-shaped fruits that are yellow, purple, or red. 
The red fruit found in South America is called Grenadillas because it looks like a little grenade. This South American fruit is used to make grenadine syrup used in drinks. Several species of elderberries are found throughout the country, mostly in wet environments. Elders grow as shrubs that can be up to 20 feet tall. In England, the shrubs are believed to attract witches and provide them sanctuary. Red-berried elders should be avoided because they are generally considered not to be edible. Those with blue or black berries provide nutritious food. The berries are rather bland, eaten raw, but become sweet with cooking or drying. The white flower clusters can be eaten raw or dipped in batter and fried. The rest of the plant is considered poisonous and should not be used in cooking. To avoid confusing elders with poisonous lookalikes, cut through the stalk and look for a firm white pith in the center. The wild cherry has relatives all over the United States, called fire cherry, choke cherry, and of course the black cherry. Cherries are lumped together as prunus species with plums. Wild cherries are very tart until they're ripe. They can be eaten out of hand and provide some vitamins and moisture, as well as sugar. They make excellent cooked fruit, jams, jellies, and wine. The seed, or pit, takes up about half the fruit and should not be eaten since it may contain cyanide. The leaves, wood, and bark of cherry trees will have an almond-like smell, indicating the presence of the cyanide-containing chemical. Therefore, you should avoid the leaves, wood, and bark when cooking, since it contains the same compound as the seeds. There are many different varieties of wild plums. They can be found in many parts of the United States, as well as other parts of the world. Common name for wild plums include Chickasaw plums, Indian plums, and beech plums, which indicates where they might grow. Wild plums are about the size of a ping pong ball. Unripened fruits can be tart, but as they mature, they sweeten up. The ripest fruits are usually found on the ground under the tree. Plums can be eaten raw or cooked like stewed plums. Colors range from orange and yellow to red and purple, so don't depend on color to determine its maturity. Instead, feel the plum to see if it's ripe. Plums contain a large seed, which should also be avoided since they may contain cyanide. Wild plums can be found all over the country, at the edges of forests, in undisturbed open fields, and near beaches. Persimmon trees are generally short, but they may grow as much as 60 feet tall. The fruits are about the size of a golf ball in this country, and orange to purple when ripe. At this time, they are mushy and sweet. In other parts of the world, persimmons may grow as large as a closed fist. Their unpleasant astringency when green has caused people to use them to play tricks on their friends. Unripe fruits will pucker up your mouth to the point where even speech is difficult and whistling is out of the question. After drying, the leaves can be made into a tea rich in vitamin C. The seeds can be roasted or boiled and eaten for a rich protein source. Persimmons are very sweet when ripe and can be used to make fruit leathers, dried, or eaten raw. The botanical name, Diospiros, means bread of the gods and refers to their taste when ripe. Persimmon trees are popular with wildlife and are a good place to put your traps and snares. Identification is easy. The trees have very rough bark like alligator skin. The fruits have six to eight seeds in most cases in this country and a little star on the back of the fruit where it attaches to the tree and the leaves are frequently spotted. Husk tomato, ground cherry, and Cape gooseberry are some of the common names this plant goes by, but the one that helps most in identification is Chinese lantern. Physalis is in the nightshade family, and only the ripe fruits are edible. They'll be orange to yellow and have a combination of tart and sweet taste. The fruits resemble small tomatoes enclosed in a husk or Chinese lantern. The leaves are elliptical and gray, and the plant closely resembles its relative, the eggplant. It will have bell-shaped yellow flowers. It can be found just about anywhere, but Chinese lantern or husk tomato prefers open, sunny areas. Juniper, 
which is actually the red cedar, produces a blue berry or fruit. When it's ripe and mature, this berry is used in many European recipes, and you can find them in the spice racks in the stores. There's a little confusion about the name, because juniper berries grow on cedar trees in this country, but the scientific name of cedar trees is Juniperus virginiana. The berry is also used to flavor gin, so if you taste these berries, you'll get a typical gin flavor. If you use these berries while cooking game, it will take away the gamey taste. If you look closely at the berries when they're mature, you'll see that they are blue. Some berries, however, are covered with a white fungus or yeast. Mixed with flour, it will act as a field expedient leavening agent or yeast and cause homemade bread or field made bread to rise. The sumac tree has a bad reputation because of its poisonous relative. There are several varieties of non-poisonous sumac and they can be recognized by their hairy stems while the poison sumac has smooth stems. Both have seven to 13 leaflets, but the leaflets on non-poisonous sumac have toothed edges and the leaves on poison sumac are generally smooth. An old saying, never trust a smoothie, helps us identify poison sumac. The non-poison sumac tree generally grows in a drier environment and has red seeds or berries, while the poison sumac usually grows along streams or near water and has white seeds. The red seeds from the non-poison sumac, when they first form in the fall, are oily and often covered with fine hairs. They're full of vitamin C, and if we soak these red berries in cold water, it will produce a tart pink drink with a lemonade flavor, hence the name Indian Lemonade. The bark of the sumac tree is used to dye leather, clothing, and wood, and is also used in making craft baskets. The wood, when thoroughly dried, is prized in some parts of the country by moonshiners because it will burn with a smokeless fire. This may be an important wood for the survivor in hiding. Willows are found just about any place there is water. All the species have tender edible shoots and leaves and edible flowers called catkins in the spring. Willows are most widely known for their use as a natural source of aspirin. Simply boil the leaves and bark to extract a salicylic acid, which is the generic name of aspirin. The seeds or berries of all the hollies are poisonous, and the leaves are questionable in many, especially when green. One holly, however, the Yopon holly, contains caffeine and is used as a substitute for coffee by boiling the leaves after they've been roasted or dried. Made too strong, as the scientific name Elex vomitoria suggests, causes nausea and vomiting. This tree is common along the sea coast and has scalloped leaf edges in contrast to the typical spiked leaves we associate with other hollies. There are many varieties of nut trees around the country and they can be useful to the survivor, not just for food. The leaves of the walnut tree can be boiled to make an antifungal medication for athlete's foot, ringworm, and other skin irritations. The two common types of walnut are the black walnut and the white walnut. In England, before the nuts are mature, they are pickled and used as a condiment to go with game dishes. Both of these nuts are rich in protein and high in oil. There is so much oil in both walnuts that you can boil the meats and extract the oil for cooking or even for maintenance of a weapon. In fact, the white walnut or butternut contains so much oil that during the Civil War and the Depression, people would boil the chopped up nut meats until the oil floated to the surface. Then they skimmed this oil off the top and whipped it into a mock butter. That's where the name butternut comes from. The leaves and hulls of the butternut are used to dye leather and clothing. Confederate soldiers were called butternuts because the dye used for their uniforms came from the leaves of the butternut tree. In North America, there are about 50 to 60 varieties of oaks. The nuts from all oak trees are known as acorns. All acorns are edible, but flavor and edibility varies greatly from species to species. Basically, there are two types of oaks. The red and the black oaks are lumped together and their leaves have lobes with a little point at the end of each lobe. The white oaks 
has smoothly lobe leaves without the points. Maritime and live oaks are evergreen oaks with oval leaves. These characteristics should be used to tell them apart. The chemical in the acorns that makes them bitter is called tannin or tannic acid. Many of the white oaks are virtually free of tannic acid when they're dried. The red and black oaks are generally high in tannic acid, which must be leached out prior to consumption. When this country was being settled, the Native Americans would leach out the tannic acid by submerging a basket of acorns into a stream or boiling them until all the tannic acid was removed. If the Indians boiled the nuts, they would save the brown liquid and use it to preserve leather. There are buckskin clothes in museums that have been preserved for over 200 years using this tannic acid water. This water can be used externally to dry up poison ivy and oak rashes or burns. It is also an excellent antifungal which can be used for athlete's foot and other skin rashes. You can make acorn flour by preparing as follows. First shell the nuts. Leach the tannic acid from them until they're no longer bitter. Dry and roast the nuts and then grind them into a fine powder. This flour can be used to make anything that calls for flour, such as pancakes, muffins, or bread. Along streams and riverbanks, we can find two varieties of hazelnuts. The American hazelnut, although small, looks like the filberts found in our Christmas mixtures. The other variety, the beaked hazelnut, looks like a little trumpet or bird's beak and is mostly found in the northern states. Ripe hazelnuts are hard to find because the squirrels like them so much they take them as soon as the nut is fully formed. When a nut is fully formed, even though it is green and bitter, it can be stored and will continue to ripen. Once ripe, it can be eaten and has a very sweet taste. Another nut tree in the hardwood forest and often found along riverbanks is the beech tree. The nuts on the beech are easily recognized because they are small and triangularly shaped. The nut can be eaten right out of the shell or ground into a flower. Beech trees are easily recognized because they're the only large tree in the forest with smooth bark. There are several varieties of hickory found throughout the country. Hickory is famous for providing flavor to game or other smoked meat. In fact, the nut holes and wood chips are specifically sold for this purpose. Hulls are particularly useful to smoke and preserve game or fish in a survival situation. A close relative of the hickory is the pecan. Originally, pecans were found in the Mississippi Valley, but they have spread throughout the southern states to become a major crop and can now be found almost anywhere. Pecans have a much softer shell, so they're easier to open than the hickory. They can be eaten raw or cooked. Two other nuts that can be encountered just about anywhere are the chestnut and its close relative, the chinkapin. The chestnuts contain two or three nuts to each burr with stickers all over the outside. The smaller chinkapins are found on bushes rather than trees and each burr contains only one nut. Both of these nuts can be eaten raw or dried and ground into a flour. Some wild food enthusiasts roast chestnuts and use them to make a coffee substitute. There are so many different varieties of pine trees that scientists lumped them all together and just called them the pinus species. For many years, survivalists have called pine trees the grocery store of the woods. The seeds, which are available in the winter months, can be eaten and are called pine nuts. In Italy, they're called pignoli, and in other parts of the world, Chinese pine nuts. Actually, they're not a nut at all, just the seed of the pine tree. They're very high in protein, but more importantly to the survivor in winter conditions, they're also high in oil, which helps produce heat in the body. All pine seeds can be eaten, but vary greatly in size, from the size of a tick up to the size of a large lima bean. The inner bark of the pine tree can also be eaten after removing the rough outer bark. This inner bark can be eaten raw or can be shredded and ground into a flour. The needles can be made into a tasty tea that is high in vitamin C by pouring scalding hot water over the needles and letting it steep. If you simmer the needles, it will destroy the vitamin C, but this boiling extracts an oil into the water, which is good for sore throats and coughs. 